What's going on my fellow YouTube peeps? Today we are talking about, as you can see by the title, my most anticipated games of 2024. Now we're just gonna get right into it because there's a few, there's not too many yet that I am aware of, but the first one on my list that I wanna talk about is the first one that's actually coming out this year, and that is Tekken 8. I'm super excited for this game because I really enjoyed what I played of Tekken 7. I didn't play a lot of Tekken growing up. I played a little bit more Street Fighter and a lot of Mortal Kombat growing up. Those were my main fighting games, excluding Super Smash Bros. But Tekken 7, I had a love for, for what I did play of it. It was pretty fun. And Tekken 8, I'm really excited to deep dive into the story mode, see what happens with the story. I mean, I don't know how crazy the story is going to be, but it looks pretty fun. It looks pretty hype. And I'm super pumped for that and really excited to get to play a lot of these characters day one and get to learn some characters and the soundtrack is what I'm looking forward to the most possibly only because the soundtrack in Tekken games usually are really fun to listen to so I'm super excited about that really excited to dive right into this game and uh, play quite a bit might play some online and stuff and it's just gonna be fun it looks really good and I'm really excited for Tekken 8 because when you look at Street Fighter 6 or you look at Mortal Kombat 1 those were really fun games too and now Tekken 8 is finally coming out and I am just really excited for it it looks great now the next game that I want to talk about is a big one and is my not quite my most anticipated game of the year it was but not anymore and that is Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth Yes, this one probably was pretty obvious to be on my list if you know me. I love Final Fantasy VII, I also love Kingdom Hearts, I love these games. And Final Fantasy VII Remake was absolutely fantastic. I loved the original Final Fantasy VII. I grew up with all of these characters as a kid. And uh, Remake was great, what they did fleshing out the entire story of the first like few hours of the original game. And now in Rebirth we get to finally explore that world and expand upon the world of Remake and Rebirth and go fully open world it looks like with these characters and we finally get to play as more characters from the FF7 world and the story is going to just kind of explode and then we have Zack's storyline going on, I'm not getting into spoiler territory, do not worry there, but there's a lot of things going on here from the trailers as you could see and we can't really predict what's going to happen because if you played the remake you kind of understand this is not quite a remake but like a sequel and it's it's kind of confusing in a way but the gameplay aspects of remake were so good and the soundtrack and the bosses everything about remake it has become it became really one of my favorite games and these characters are so beloved that i am just we're in for a trip with this sequel it, it sucks because we're gonna have to wait a few more years before we get to play the third and final installment but I am going to take my time and enjoy Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and enjoy where the story goes, enjoy the combat. Uh, hopefully it has a New Game Plus kind of thing like the remake did. I'm just really, really excited about everything to do with this game. And it's going to be exciting to see the differences between the original and Rebirth, just like Remake versus the original. I'm very excited to see where this goes. Now the next game that I want to talk about is... Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door Remake. Gosh, let me tell you, when this game was announced, that threw me off, man. Like, I mean, seriously, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, we asked for this game to come to the Switch for years. Just a port. Just port the game over from the GameCube. We'll be happy, you know? But no, the team behind Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door said if there was enough demand for it, they would totally bring the game to the Nintendo Switch. They didn't say that they would fully remake this game. They said that they would just bring the game to the Switch. They didn't tell us whether they would remaster it, remake it, they didn't say any of that. They just said if there was enough high demand, they would totally be down to do it if Nintendo would allow it. And it turns out that there was enough high demand, I say that Arlo is a part of this, uh, but there was enough high demand for Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door to be fully remade from the ground up. Even the soundtrack is remade. And gosh, dude. Let me just tell you, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is one of my favorite video games of all time and is probably my favorite Mario game in general of all time. The story, the characters, the gameplay, the combat, the world, like there's so much to love about Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door and I couldn't be more excited for this dang game to come to the Switch. To be able to play this game handheld is truly a dream come true. That's why I wanted it to come to the Switch. It's 
one of the reasons because I will play this multiple times on the Nintendo Switch. And if Mario RPG said anything, for those of you who have not played Thousand Year Door, if you liked Mario RPG, you're in for a ride with this one. And I am so excited for you if this is your first playthrough. Now I wanna talk directly to Nintendo for a second. You know, Nintendo, give me my Zelda, Twilight Princess, and Wind Waker HD, please. I know you're not watching this because I'm a nobody here on YouTube. But please, give me my Zelda titles on the Switch, please. Oh, my brother Anakin, I loved you. Like seriously though, I wanna talk about Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD for a second because this has been rumored for years now. And if in all honesty, I think 2024 is the year of ports and remasters slash remakes for the Nintendo Switch because I believe their next console is right around the corner. And so far, 2024, we've gotten nothing but announcements of remakes and remasters mostly that are coming to the Switch with the exception of the Peach game. It's basically all remakes and remasters so far that we know of. I'm also hoping for the Metroid games as well, but whatever. I want Zelda more. So Zelda Wind Waker HD, like Wind Waker is such a magical experience. Like if you've never played Wind Waker, it's soundtrack and gameplay is fun and it's just... It's just a fun little game. It's basically like Breath of the Wild before Breath of the Wild, like a linear type of open world kind of thing because it's not fully open world, but it's a world that you can sail from point A to point B and there's different exploration aspects to it that I really, really liked. Kind of like Skyward Sword in a way where Skyward Sword was semi open, but more linear kind of thing. It's that type of situation before Skyward Sword was actually a thing. As for Twilight Princess, I've only dabbled in that game a little bit when I was younger. I never fully played through that game. And that is a game that I just am fascinated by because of its art style. And I've seen some aspects of the story, but I don't know much about it because I never played it from beginning to end, only bits and pieces of it. And I'm very just intrigued by the storyline with Minna and Link and Wolf Link and playing as Wolf Link as well. And of course Ganondorf as well. I mean, I know I won't like that Ganondorf quite as much as I do the one in Tears of the Kingdom because that one's just phenomenal and Matt Mercer, oh my gosh, he crushed it. But that being said, Nintendo, please just give me my Zelda ports. I just, it's something I really want in 2024. I really, really want this before the next console. It's easy to just port these games over from the Wii U. Like, come on, dude. Come on. But I'm willing to pay you. Yeah. Nope, no purchases allowed. I'm trying to be a good paying customer. Why not put the games on Switch? They aren't available on Switch. Now I only have one more that I can think of at the moment that is coming out this year that I really, really want to play. And that is my most anticipated game of the year, I would say, because, well, I've waited 20 years for this game to be a reality. And that is Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi 4, but they are calling it Sparking Zero, which does mean Tenkaichi, but the English version. And oh my gosh, I can just tell you guys right now, the amount of hours that I put into the Budokai series and the Budokai Tenkaichi Dragon Ball games when I was a kid on the PlayStation 2 is insane. The amount of hours that I played of these games. Heck, if you look on eBay at the price of Tenkaichi 3, it's basically a $200 game. And that is because it's a, just a legendary, super rare game and literally considered the best Dragon Ball game ever made. And these games growing up from the graphics to the gameplay, the story was just, you know, Dragon Ball Z, but like the gameplay and the graphics were just stunning for the PlayStation 2, as well as like all the extra stuff that they added in, such as the modes, the tournament mode in the original Budokai games was challenging and fun. And the unlockables of the items and stuff was also really cool. And then the Tenkaichi series, I don't remember quite as much on them because I haven't owned them in many years. But what I do remember is Tenkaichi 3, the roster expanded upon the first two so much, it added 150 characters in the third game. You could play as characters such as Mr. Popo and the Turtle, and I think Roshi as well. It was absolutely insane. And I don't know how many modes the game had specifically, but my most memorable moments of this game was split screen mode, play, fighting against people with a, a roster of 150 characters. 
and now being able to do that online with a new one with graphics that are going to look absolutely crazy and from what i'm hearing the roster will be quite big for the base roster and then we know this game's going to get dlc for probably at least five four or five years because they're they're gonna milk this game hard because we've asked for it for so many years i just think that the game's going to be hopefully something special it's been in development for over five years now and the the hype build up for this is really starting to blow up as we're starting to get screenshots we're gonna be getting a new trailer possibly at the end of january and they're gonna build up the launch to this game which will likely be in october or november but i know this is the game that i've been talking about the most in this video and that's because it's my most anticipated game of the year because i grew up with these dragon ball games i grew up with many different game franchises but i have just a lot of very fond memories with these games like i remember playing tenkaichi 2 or 3 in my brother's room on the playstation 2 when i was a kid while he was at school or work i think work and i had someone over and we were in there playing the game when we weren't supposed to because i needed help with one of the broly fights which was very very difficult that being said though outside of those there's not really much for me personally that i can think of that i'm like really excited to play yet until we get more announcements from sony or nintendo until we see more such as a nintendo direct in february we might see a sony state of play soon um i don't know if wolverine's gonna come out this year i feel like that's probably gonna be a 2025 release now after the unfortunate events that happened with insomniac games as for nintendo they're always very secretive will we get a new console revealed this year for maybe either holiday this year or 2025 i'm leaning more towards 2025 but that being said we don't know what all is releasing from nintendo this year there's very few games that are first party titles that we know of at the moment we got mario vs donkey kong we got luigi's mansion 2 we got the peach game and we got paper mario the thousand year door other than those there might be more I'm missing, but those are the ones that I can think of off the back of my hand. Other than those, I'm not sure what else they're releasing. But that being said, those are my most anticipated games of 2024. I'm super excited for this year. Very excited to go back, play some other games, and excited for all these new games as well, as well as announcements for other games that are probably going to come out this year that I don't even know of yet. So anyways, guys, thanks so much for tuning into this video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will see you guys all next time. Peace.